Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keyes. So you've decided to invest in a fluid head and you're wondering, how much money do I have to spend to get the quality that I'm looking for to take video and maybe even to do some bird photography? Well, I'm gonna let you know right after this. In part one of this series, I just talked about some of the differences between a gimbal and a fluid head. And in this video, I'm gonna look at four fluid heads all across the spectrum. The parameters for this video are between 200-ish dollars and up to about $1,000. I looked at four different price points, around four to 500, around 700, and then around $1,000. And I compared them to the fluid head that I own that is just around $200. Now I'm gonna break each of these products into its own little chapter at the bottom. So you can check that if you're curious just about one of them. But I do think you're gonna find some really interesting things. I learned a lot about fluid heads. I've been playing with these for the last month or so and um, pretty, pretty interesting. And before we get into the heads themselves, I just wanna talk a little bit about the tripods that I'm using here and what you might be looking for when you're taking video as opposed to photography. And I'm gonna show you how I've adapted a couple of things here. So let's just talk about the tripods real quickly. I'm using Robus legs. They're very standard. Uh, I like the price point on these. I think they're very, very good. I've used them for a long time. These were gifted to me a uh, long time ago, but these are kind of my standard legs for video it is critical. And one of the difference between photography and video, I may get some people that disagree with this, but for video, as smooth as possible. You'd never want to see shaking in a video. You want to see very smooth starting, very smooth stopping and transitioning. With still photography, if there's a little play, if there's a little vibration here or there, it's probably not the end of the world. Temporary vibration or, or bumping temporarily probably isn't going to ruin the whole event. But in a video, it's much different. Every frame matters. Still photography, I guess what I'm trying to say is you've got a little bit more leeway. You absolutely want a stable base. I'm not recommending get the cheapest tripod. So in fact, I always recommend using a tripod with an apex, not a center column. That'll add a little bit of wiggle and vibration and the best one you can afford. So four to $500 starting range for a tripod for wildlife photography might be about right. And you can certainly go way up from there. I've got videos on tripod legs. So if you're interested in that take a look at some very expensive ones but quite honestly i find that in this four to five hundred dollar range for tripod legs you're probably in pretty good shape the second thing i want to talk about is one of the differences between video and photography just in terms of the equipment so this is a uh, manfrotto this is the 502 and i'm going to tilt this down so you see that there's a clamp here this is different than the Arca Swiss style. So most photography uses an Arca Swiss clamp. I'm going to show you what that looks like. It's thinner and here you'll tighten it down so that the leg or the plate will match into there and then you tighten it up. On the bottom of this one, I've got a different plate. So this is a clamp and this is a plate and this plate matches the Manfrotto system. With most videography, the Manfrotto system is the standard. I, I mention that because there are a few companies that have proprietary clamps and plates. We'll look at one of those today. For the most part, if you're doing videography and that matters to you, if you want to be able to move from equipment to equipment, you might want to look at a couple things. Does it have a Manfrotto plate and clamp or does it have an Arca Swiss? For videography, the majority have Manfrotto, but there are a few that have Arca Swiss. All of the ones I'm looking at today will use the Manfrotto plate or a proprietary plate. For this video to make it easy, and just a tip for you, if you're interested in converting, you buy about a 100 millimeter Arca can, uh, clamp. You just mount it, two screws here for more security, mount it to the Manfrotto, and you've got a real cheap adapter. This um, particular model actually comes with Kirk, who makes an adapter to take off the Manfrotto plate and switch it right to Arca. So again, if you're a wildlife photography, you're probably already on the Arca Swiss system, so it makes a lot of sense, but this adaptation for me is really great because I can use either an Arca plate or a Manfrotto. So that's what I'm gonna be using for this video. To start this one, I have bookended. I've started at the lowest price point and generally I go up you know, lowest to highest, but I'm starting at the lowest and I'm bookcasing it with the highest. There's a reason for that. Um, and part of it is just practicality. I do wanna show you the difference between what you get in a 200. And I'm saying 200 because the price on this one ranges. $200 one to about $1,000 one. Now, before I get started with any of these reviews, I have to mention this. Some of the products I own, a couple of them were gifted to me. 
the vast majority of what I'm reviewing today was loaned to me by B&H. It's my favorite way to do reviews. I have absolutely no affiliation with anybody. All of the affiliate links will be down below. Because B&H is nice enough to lend me this gear, and to be honest, it takes a lot of time. These are some of the toughest videos I make. It takes a lot of time, a lot of editing, a lot of, editing, a lot of research. Um, I would appreciate it just in terms of the effort I've put forward. If you're interested in purchasing any of these, and there's some that I really would recommend, take a look down at the affiliate links below. Nothing here is biased. What I own is this Manfrotto. This is mine. Purchased this one out of pocket. What was gifted to me are these tripod legs by Robus, two different styles. I'll link them down below. I really, really like these. I got one pair and asked for another one. Um, I liked them so much. What was on loan are the three tripod heads that we'll be testing outside of Manfrotto. So I wanted to get that out of the way before I forget. Let's get into the video. I'm going to start over here with the Manfrotto. This is the MVH502A. They make a couple of less expensive versions. This one is wildly popular. Um, and for a budget, for a value conscious person, it's a great selection. I will tell you the downfalls of this and the pros and cons. First of all, it's a flat base, which means it does not come with a leveling base. The other three that I'm going to look at have it built in. If you add the leveling base to this, you're adding about $100 to $150, depending on the company. So right away, this $200, $250 head turns into about a $300 to $400 head. So just keep that in mind if you, if you absolutely want a leveling base. Now, if you own the leveling base, this can be a really good option. Or if the leveling base isn't that important. I will tell you with videography, in part one, I covered a lot of these uh, concepts, but you want to a completely smooth and even horizon. You don't want it to be off at all. And that's why most videography includes some sort of a leveling base. A few things about this one, uh, just kind of the pros. I'm gonna put the specs up here on the side so you can see what I'm talking about. The payload's listed at 22 pounds. It weighs a little under four pounds. It is frictionless, which means when I dial all of the tension off, and I'll do this in the panning mode, same thing in the tilting mode, when I when I turn that off, it really does, I don't want to spin it too much, but it really spins completely. I can spin this in circles, very, very smooth. It also has a continuous friction adjustment, which means as I slowly turn this wheel, I get almost an infinite amount of adjustment. It's not stepped. Stepped meaning click one, click two, click three. This is continuous. So it's frictionless and continuous in both the panning and the tilting. That's good. It did rate some temperatures. One thing about fluid heads is they get colder, they can freeze up a little bit. With the more commercial style, you may not get the really low temperature performance that you might with, say, this Miller that we'll look at in a minute. So this is rated to minus four Fahrenheit. I will put all in the notes, I will put all of the metric calculations for my European friends. You've gotten on me a couple times about that. So this is a top heavy design as all of them will be, meaning the weight is gonna be on top of the bottom. It responds to that by a system called counterbalancing, meaning it, once it's down, some sort of mechanism, very much like a spring, will try to pull it back into shape, pull it back into either this horizontal position or have just the right amount of strength to leave it where it's at. The big downside of this is that it does not counterbalance much weight. It's rated to counterbalance eight pounds. I tested it at 10. It did not counterbalance. This one is even higher than that. And I just want to show you the failure of this is if I let it go, it drops. And so to keep it in a position, I have to continually lock it and then continually unlock it. That's a pretty big deal. The movement of this is very smooth. I, I've done at the end, I'm going to compare the movements of these. I, I actually recorded it through the camera and I show you each one and how it performed. I felt the movement of this one was pretty good. So I test it left and right, up and down. I look for this herky jerkiness or any kind of uh, difference in the way it looks. I felt it was pretty good. In fact, I blindfolded myself. Uh, I just shut my eyes, but I took the two of them and I really tried to see on just the panning feature. If I'm just panning these back and forth, do I really know a difference? And the, and the reality was I didn't tell much of a difference, which means the performance of the $200 unit was very, very close to the performance of the $1,000 unit with some major differences. The biggest of which is the build quality is much less. The counterbalancing is, I'm going to tell you, it's almost non-existent and it's not adjustable. It's got a built-in counterbalance. Whatever it is, it is. 
Some of the others you'll have stepped counterbalance, which allows you to choose the weight of your setup and hopefully it balances evenly. At the very least, it'll pull it back so that it never flops. As far as this one's concerned, if you're a value conscious shooter, if you're not worried about this half ball leveling base, the Manfrotto MVH 502A is a very good choice in terms of performance. I want you to stay tuned because I've got another one that honestly is more expensive and may be a better option when you consider value. So we're gonna look at that. I'm gonna pivot a little bit. I'm gonna lock this one out. I will tell you again, I like the performance of this. Oh, by the way, it's got an odd lockout for the panning. It's in the front here in an odd position. Um, I'm gonna lock this one out and I'm gonna head over to the $1,000 unit. This one made by a totally different company. By the way, I try to mention, sometimes I forget the company of origin. This one's made, tells me it's manufactured in Italy. I purchased this by myself. So this one I own. So now I'm gonna pivot a little bit to a product made by a company called Miller. This is an Australian company. It is manufactured in Australia. And this is very much a commercial oriented line. This is actually one of their cheapest, if not their cheapest fluid head. They go all the way up from, a, and they started around $1,000. Now why is one $1,000 and one 200? I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this, but I will tell you. This is really geared at the videographer, not as much at the photographer. And there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, it's using a proprietary plate. So I've put my 10-ish pound setup on here and I'm using a plate that is not compatible with Arca Swiss, nor is it compatible with Manfrotto. It's actually only compatible to their own plate. So once you commit to this system, the equipment is kind of dedicated to that system. You can change the plates, but it's not, it's not really convenient. The second thing is it doesn't have a ton of adjustments. So it doesn't give you the same flexibility as some of the other ones that we're gonna look at in a minute. The construction is top notch. Everything about this is made in a very industrial feel. It's got solid metal, really, really fluid. The action is great. Everything about this is wonderful. It does not give you the adjustments. I'll show you that in a minute. And again, because of some of the little things about it, it's probably not geared for the photographer who's doing a hybrid meaning you want both the videography and the photography. Let me walk through this one real quick. It's got a lockout adjustment on the side. It's got a lockout adjustment on the panning. I will tell you of all of the lockouts that I tested, these were the most solid lockouts. Um, when I locked it out on the tilt, it was almost rock solid. On the panning, almost rock solid. I really had to move it to make a difference there. Uh, the options on the side, let's see if I can spin this around toward me. Only a couple of adjustments. It's got an adjustment for the panning drag, drag meaning the amount of resistance. It's got an adjustment for the tilting drag, and it's got two settings for counterbalance. Now, one thing I wanna show you with this counterbalance, I'm gonna push this down. I'm in the first setting. It's a 10 pound setup. And I'm gonna move it down. Ooh, I've got the lock on, hold on. I didn't turn the lock off all the way. Let me just, there we go. All right, I'm gonna move it down. Now watch this, stay in position. I'll tilt it up, stays in position. It is very balanced, much the way a gimbal would be. And I can go almost to an extreme and it's still balanced. So really, 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 really nice uh, in terms of its counterbalance. It's very, very smooth. The drag control wasn't, I'm gonna be honest, it's not a lot. I did not notice the difference between the lowest and the highest drag, maybe just a little bit. Same on this panning drag. The tough part about this, it is not frictionless. Now I want you to remember when I showed you the cheapest one, even that you could spin around and be free. So if you're doing birds in flight, some people like that frictionless, just almost no tension on it. This one will always have some tension. If I try to spin this around, you could see it's always got tension. Even with the drag turned all the way off, there's always tension. It is not so great, and I did use this out in the field. It is not so great that it's a problem. So if I turn the drag off, okay, so the drag's off both ways, you can see it moves very, very smoothly. I can do birds in flight. So I can do birds in flight. I just will never get the ability to be frictionless. If you're just doing videography, and you want a rock solid, probably gonna last your lifetime, smooth as heck, absolutely look at this one. 
or if you want to spend some more money, look at their others. But it is a big investment, especially if you're doing wildlife photography. I'm going to switch these setups. I'm going to show you two more options in the middle price range, one between four and 500 and one around 700. So I'm going to flip these out and show you those two because I think one of them especially is a really good compromise in terms of price, value, and performance. So let me switch these up. I'll be right back. I have switched out the video heads on this side and I am going to, this is the toughest thing about this video is pronouncing this company. I will call this Sure. I have been argued with several times on the pronunciation of this. I have listened to people from the company pronounce this and while their accent is much different, the closest I can get to it is Sure. It might be Sure. It's close. I'm calling it Sure. Please don't say anything down in the comments. On this side, I've got the Benro. I'm pretty sure about this one. This is the BH or the BV10H and this is the BCH20. I'm going to talk about this in terms of each one separately. I'm going to give you a, a direct comparison. I think for a lot of people, this is where comparison starts to come in. I was so fascinated by this topic. This is uh, $479. I was so fascinated by this price point that I may compare uh, this fluid head with a bunch of others at 500 and see which is the best of the lot. That seems to be for me, from my price point, if I was looking for a fluid head that does the things that it does, uh, this is about the price point I think we're going to be in. I'm going to compare this more to the $200 Manfrotto. I'm going to show you the differences. Both of these, by the way, fairly comparable in terms of performance. Let's just go through this Sure real quick. Uh, this is a big unit. This one weighs about seven pounds, both of them. Has a payload of 22 pounds. It is frictionless on both the tilt, and I'll turn this off, and the panning. It's much easier to show you on the panning, so I'm gonna show you. It's the same thing on the tilt. Frictionless, remember that Miller had resistance here. All of the other three are frictionless at the lowest setting. So I'm gonna put a little bit of tension back on here and it locks out uh, pretty quickly. Now, the other thing we wanted to look at was uh, counterbalance. So is there anything different or unique about this? It does have a counterbalance that goes from one to seven. I've got the same 10 pound structure on here. I'm at one. So let's see what happens if I tilt it up. Remember, this is the lowest setting. Pretty good, right? It, it stays in place. So I don't need much more than one and it stays in place. Now I'm going to make sure I have a little bit of, uh, of the lock on. I'm going to take that off. It may move a little bit. So there it is. So remember the Miller stayed completely still, but only had two adjustments. This one gives you seven. So let's turn it up to two. Maybe two's better. So I put it down here. Now, instead of flopping, it kind of wants to return to its, its home. Remember, there's a spring type system that's constantly giving it weight on the other direction. Is it balanced perfectly? It's pretty close. So somewhere in here is the right setting. Again, I have no friction on this. This is just the counterbalancing. So there it's fine. On the back, it's a little off. If I add just a hair of this friction, just a hair, it'll hold steady and I can move it. So the counterbalance system on this one particularly seems very, very, very good. There it's off center. You could actually tell it's off center. So we can continue to adjust this a little bit. I've got a plate on here that is from Sure. So this isn't adapted. We'll see if maybe I can get it a little bit better adjusted. There the adjustment's a little better. And you can see that it holds pretty well at the lowest setting of one. It's got seven counterbalances. Let me show you what happens when you turn up the counterbalance. I'll pull this all the way to seven. What you're going to see is, I'm going to be careful, it actually, like that spring becomes really strong and tries to return it to the horizontal position no matter what. You may actually like that. Most people want it to be balanced so that when they leave it in the spot, it stays fairly close without flopping. So here it seems like the balance is pretty good and I could certainly add a little bit more, but it may want, see how it wants to return. No, no tension on here. All right, so that is the, the principal adjustments here. It's got the counterbalance plus the two drag controls. Drag controls go from one to three. I've been playing around. I kept it on two on both and I found for video two was really, really good. If I was doing birds in flight, I could move to one. Now remember, I did a video that talked about video heads versus fluid heads. For me, as a wildlife photographer, what I'm most concerned about is what gives me the best of both worlds. I know with a gimbal, video is tough. I know with a fluid head, bird photography has to be good. 
And one of the things about fluid heads is that they do the best job at video and do a very good job at most bird photography or wildlife photography. Gimbals do a great job at the bird or wildlife photography, but they only do an average job, maybe a mediocre job at video. So a lot of people have switched to fluid heads over the last several years as video has become increasingly more popular. As far as the construction of this one, not doing a full detail. This is really about price point. So I'm not going to get into the every single part of this. But I will tell you, I like the construction. It felt like the vast majority was aluminum. It felt very robust. Uh, like I said, it's a little heavy. So when you're considering weight, this one's seven pounds. The other ones were in the four pound range. Um, and this one cost under $500. Let me switch over to the other one here real quick. This Benro is coming in at uh, $725. I want to point out a few things that's different. This has a 100 millimeter ball. This is a 75 millimeter ball. We didn't talk about ball size, but for the most part, you're either 70 or 75 or 100. As you get larger with the equipment, they tend to go to 100. But for most bird photographies, I, I think 75 is plenty. Wildlife photographers, 75 is plenty. The vast majority of videography with the wildlife equipment, 75 is absolutely fine. I don't have a 100 meter, 100 millimeter bowl. I have propped the 100 into the 75. It's rock solid. So somebody might look at this and say, that looks a little funny. It is, because it's not really designed for a 75, but I am not spending thousands of dollars on another tripod just for this video review, which will probably make about $15. So what I'm going to do is just adapt this. It's rock solid. I'm not worried about it at all. Let's talk about the Benro. The drag system, very similar to the Sure. It's got um, zero to three. It is frictionless, so when I go to zero, you can see I just, it spins so smoothly. Uh, it does a good job. Kept that one around too. Felt very comparable to that. On the back, it's got drag settings here. Again, the zero is frictionless. Three is going to give you the most resistance. I kept this around two for videography and for bird photography or birds in flight, I kept it at one. On the other side, instead of seven positions of resistance, it's got four. I'm going to turn it down to zero. It will flop because there is no resistance. There's no counterbalancing. At one, now remember at one, that one held. It's a little lighter setup. This one's heavier, so we wouldn't expect maybe the same performance. This is a more expensive unit. That's why I put the heavier camera on here. At one, you can see it doesn't counterbalance. At two, pretty close. It's going to flop a little bit. I'm going to go to three. Three, I believe, is where I had the most success with this no tension control on here so it's completely free to move you will see that spring see how it's slow gimbals won't do this the spring will slowly pull it back at times especially at extreme angles so when the angle is more the spring wants to react more when the angle's not it'll let it go so if you're close to the horizon it will generally stay this really is a big deal what you don't want to do with that uh, $200 Manfrotto, what I typically had to do is if I, if I was at any angle to be safe to the equipment, I'd have to lock it out. Often a bird would come in quick. I'd want to move. I have to unlock it. Not the panning mechanism, but that tilting mechanism. That is a really big deal. The other thing about these two units at around, I'm going to say $500, $700. These two include this half ball leveling base. The more expensive unit had $100. The less expensive unit had $75. Payload is the exact same on these 22 pounds, both frictionless, both three steps. This had a seven step counterbalance. This had a four step counterbalance. This one, by the way, included two handles. I put them both on here for fun. And the bubble level, which they all have, is illuminated. So there's a little button in there that hits the bubble level. I read the reviews on both of these. Is there any knocks on these? Because I'm actually pretty impressed with these. Construction seems similar. It felt like the $500 one had at least as good of construction as the more expensive one. No way to really tell that other than to own it for years and years and years. But it really did feel like the construction of this Sure was really, really solid. I'm going to show you a test in a minute. I'm going to see what the capacity of these lenses is. In other words, how much can they really hold? I am going to set up the dualies. I didn't do it with the Miller. I for sure won't do it with the Manfrotto. Can either of these handle two big lenses? This is 10 pounds, or this one's 10 pounds, this is 15. If I had put them together, I'm at least at 25 pounds. Can either of these handle 25 pounds and stay balanced? I'm going to show you that in a minute. I'm also going to do a comparison just where I show you all of the video 
side by side where we're panning back and forth and you can see it, it, which one is the most fluid. There's very, very little difference that I noticed. I'm not a professional videographer, but I didn't notice much difference at all in the field. There's something called a wiggle. I'll show you this in a minute, but basically when you start and stop real quick, what you don't want is any little clicking, any little chatter. I don't know if my mic picks that up. There is the tiniest bit of this when you start and stop. I show that in the video as I'm moving it quickly. This one, I did not notice that. It has nothing to do with the weight of the camera. I'm actually listening in here. And it felt smoother on the start and stop. The Miller, extremely smooth. Probably, if I am splitting hairs, probably the Sure might be a hair smoother. This one might be a hair less, and then the Manfrotto might be a hair less. But they're, honestly, if I blindfolded you guys and had you out in the field, I bet you if the handles were the same, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Um, so all fairly comparable, all in the same ballpark. What is interesting about this, before I get to the big boy setup, what is interesting about these two? I was comparing the stats. I did my super big boy test. I put the dualies on. I noticed the flop, and I tried to see like which one felt the sturdiest. And I thought, before I went back to my notes, I actually forgot that the Sure was cheaper. I thought this was the $700 fluid head. And I thought this was the $500 fluid head. Remember, I have no affiliation to either of these companies. I've worked with Benro in the past. I like them as a company. They make some great products. I've recommended some of their gimbals. I like their products. I have absolutely no problem with this. But the one thing about this channel that people consistently say, and it makes me really proud, is that I trust this guy. He doesn't seem to be selling something. He doesn't seem to be using these affiliate links um, for the purpose of using the affiliate links. Now, I appreciate the affiliate links. Believe me, when you use those affiliate links, it's great for me. But I will never sacrifice my reputation to sell a product for a measly commission. What I would like you to do is continue to watch the channel, find it helpful for you, and in the long run, believe that this guy knows what he's talking about and I trust him. Therefore, I will use the affiliate links when he recommends something because I really do believe it. So I'm going to put the big boys on here. I'm probably going to stand up. I'll do one at a time. The setup is homemade. I don't put this out there for you. I've got a video called The Dooleys. It's kind of a spoof, but every now and then you see a guy that's got all of the equipment and all the gear connected to everything. And it's kind of a spoof on that, but I actually made a setup. And on one side, it's videography. On the other side, it's photography. Typically, I would use a 70 to 200 on one side, a lighter setup with my normal setup on the left side. But on this one, I'm going to put both of the big ones on there and see if either of these two heads can support that with their counterbalance. I think it's a pretty good test. I think you're going to be surprised because if it, as long as it duplicates what I did out in the field, this one's going to be pretty interesting. So let me tear this down. I'll be right back. So the stress test. This is kind of like the limits of what something can do. I have this on the strongest counterbalance. I told you I got about a 25 pound setup. I have removed my adapted Arca plate. So Manfrotto to Arca. I have replaced it with a Manfrotto plate. I do not, by the way, please don't ask me what this is. Figure it out yourself because if somebody does this and breaks their equipment, I don't want to hear about it. Um, these are made by a company called Small Rig. You can look at that yourself. I feel really good. This is actually pretty stable. So uh, surprisingly stable. I'm going to make sure before I do anything that this is cinched up tight because if one of these drops, I'm in trouble. Okay, here's what I got. By the way, somebody uh, recommended a pano base here. I've got a lot of connections, so maybe not the most stable thing, but this pano base actually allows me to tilt it. I have played with this, by the way. I can do videography and photography. I can hit the video button, and it's pretty close to recording what I'm actually shooting provided it's in the right area or the right range in, in terms of depth. Uh, it's just the way that parallel or parallax things work. Um, there has to be a convergence point. But if I'm in that area, it actually works. I can hit video and do stills at the exact same time. So pretty neat. All right. I've got the highest counterbalance set up for, I'll put the highest drag on as well. It is locked out now. This is the Benro. This is the stress test. I'm going to loosen it up. I'm going to go backwards. And you can, then there's the flop. It's so top heavy, the counterbalance is not strong enough to support it. Now, will this ever be practical? I doubt it. I doubt anybody's putting 25 pounds worth of gear on a fluid head. But as the stress, and for a little bit of fun, here we go. 
Now, I am going to uh, pause this video because it does take a second for me to set this up. I want to be careful. I don't break anything. So I'm going to lock this out. I'm going to pause the video, show you this over here, and then I'm just going to real quickly show you side by side how there is very little difference through the lens when you're practically looking at a scene in the amount of movement or how fluid these are between these four. Even the $200 to $1,000 one. Small difference, but it's not it's not four times or five times the price difference. These are the two I was really most concerned about. Let me, let me see if this one, can the Sure, the cheaper one, the f under 500, can this handle the big boys? Let's find out. Now I've set up the Sure. Um, I've taken the tension off and I'm on the second setting. So again, here's the tension that's locked out for the tilt. I'm gonna unlock it all the way. I, I like these knobs. Oh, the Sure's got me on the knobs too. All right got seven adjustments so let's just assume that I need all seven dial that into seven I'll dial the drag up and here's a moment of truth can anything support it okay actually backwards it actually supported it. maybe a little off let's see oh my goodness the stress test 25 pounds of gear and watch this. It actually returns it, which means it's stronger than the weight of the equipment. It doesn't give me a maximum counterbalance. Most of these did not. So I think for this one, the counterbalance feels 15 to 20 pounds. I don't think you can go higher than that. On this one, it's still counterbalanced. I'm at six, let's go down to five. I've got, I've got room to wiggle here. So I'm at five and it's still there. I'm calling this 25 pounds, it might be a little heavier. I would guess that this will support and count, not just support and counterbalance 35 pounds or 30, 30 pounds of gear. Would I do this? Probably not. This isn't a professional setup. In a pinch, if you were at your yard, you weren't carrying it around, you were in a controlled environment, you wanted to play around and have fun and put something heavy on top, you could probably do this. If you were using the lightest setups, if you're using 70 to 200s, let me lock this out, it scares me. If you're using 70 to 200s, uh, 100 to 400, 200 to 500, 500 PF, if you're using a little bit lighter setups, uh, the counterbalance on all of these will work. The counterbalance on that Manfrotto, I'm telling you 70 to 200 was about all it would counterbalance. So if you're using anything heavier than that, you may wanna look at another one. I've recorded this now through the, through the lens and I watched it a few times personally and honestly, practically you don't see that much of a difference. So if you watched this a few times, uh, by the way, this is like herky-jerky, kind of shaky um, at a slower speed. So I've slowed it down and just watch you know, each one. You just, you just don't see a difference. And again, I watched this repeatedly, um, live videos and in, in, in the field, I just didn't see that much of a difference. So uh, let's get into these closing thoughts. I'm going to give you some closing thoughts here. I'll leave this up as I, as I finalize this. Here's what I found. In terms of performance, not a huge deal. At $200, the Manfrotto just didn't have the stability to handle heavier lenses like we would use in wildlife photography, or if anybody's using a longer lens for videography. It is a great value option. If you've got a lighter setup, you own a, a gimbal, you just want something that takes video better than a gimbal, you can use it. Maybe not the best for bird photography, but it will actually work just fine. Frictionless, remember, it goes frictionless, birds in flight, no problem. The Sure. At $500, the strongest of this group in terms of counterbalance, drag was equally as smooth as any of them. Build quality seems pretty good. Illuminated bubble, little things. All the handles worked. I nitpicked it. I don't see anything in here that really disappointed me. The smallest thing that I will tell you is on the horizontal lockout right here. And I'm not going to do it too much. I'm going to lock it out. You can still move the head. I'm pushing on this. You can see it moving. That to me is negligible. If it's locked out, it's not wiggling. It's only if you exert a force against it. I've read some comments where people um, downgraded the review on this because of that. Honestly, 
practically, which is everything I do practically, realistically, it's not, it's not any concern to me. How does that compare to the Benro? Well, at a couple hundred dollars more, the Benro was not as strong, but plenty strong enough for 99% of wildlife photographers. It was equally as smooth, if not marginally, but very, very close. Build quality seems fine, uh, reputable. Both of these built in China. I didn't, don't know if I mentioned that. Um, lockout was good. It, again, if you really torqued on it, you could move the horizontal lockout. Tilt lockout was fine. So not a huge problem with this one, other than I think there's a better option for $200 less. The nice thing about this channel, tell you exactly what I think. The Miller for videography only, I, I don't recommend that for a wildlife photographer. It uses a proprietary plate, it doesn't have frictionless control. It is built like a tank. Uh, so if you just want to buy something for videography and have it last forever, I think it's a really good choice. People love it. People love the brand. That one's made in Australia. It's $1,000, close to $1,000, $950. So you could probably tell where my bias is. Here's the thing I'm thinking. The Manfrotto down below, check the link at b and It is often on sale at a tremendous value. It goes on sale up to $100. So it's really a good value. Check that out. If you get that one down at $150, it's tough to beat. It does not come with this, this half ball, this leveling base. If you're using the leveling base and the Manfrotto was up at the retail of $250, you're talking about a $350 to $400 investment to get the leveling base and the ball head. For $79 more, maybe $100 more, you could get the Sure. And to me, there is absolutely no comparison between the Sure and the Manfrotto. The only difference really is price and then weight. The Manfrotto being under four pounds, this one being about seven. So weight and size is much bigger, but you're getting a lot for that extra weight. So something to consider. If you haven't watched my videos on gimbal, talk about weight and what, you know, who's it for, check out those. If you're a value conscious shopper and all you care about is a video head that is less expensive, look at the Manfrotto, specifically look at B&H, they run the best price on that. If you're looking for a videography head that will last forever, check out the Miller. If you're looking for the best hybrid that supports a ton of weight, is smooth as heck, has a great build, definitely check out this uh, BHC20. I'll put a link down below. I am going to compare this. I'm going to ask B&H to hold on to this for another month as part of this series of fluid heads. I'm going to try to compare this to three other, maybe two to three other fluid heads in this four to $500 range, all by different vendors. Since I've already viewed or already reviewed the more expensive Benro and tell you that I like it, I may stay away from Benro and go with a couple of uh, brands that aren't as popular or maybe something you're curious about. So let me know down in the comments. This was a big video, long video. Was this helpful? If you're shopping for fluid for, uh, heads, was this helpful in terms of comparison as far as what you get for each price point and what you can get for each price point? Was it helpful? The other thing I want to know down in the comments is, did you watch, are you staying with me through these longer format videos and do you appreciate the time that I put into it? If you've got any specific questions about fluid heads, Watch part one because it might answer some there, but if there's any specific things about fluid heads before I make the next video, please let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are. Again, these videos take a lot of time. They take a lot of energy. The return on my time for this is about $2 an hour. What I'm relying on is a couple of people that are generous enough to say, hey, let me shop through those affiliate links. Let me help Scott out. There's a little button down there for donations. You can hit that. You can throw me a couple bucks. I appreciate all of that. It just helps me with the amount of time that I put so that I can continue to make these videos. Again, the return on investment of time is not nearly what I get from a full-time job. So uh, take a look at that down below those affiliate links. I do want to thank you for, for watching this particular video. Down, there's a subscribe button. It's going to give you product reviews, software reviews, editing tips, a little bit of in the field. Most of the in the field and editing stuff is over on my Patreon site. I'll put a link down there be uh, below. Check that out. You might enjoy that. I've got a lot of subscribers there. They give me a lot of great feedback. It kind of takes you more in depth with some of this. Hit the bell for notifications. That'll let you know when I have a new video out. And the last thing I think I always have to do is let you know that I hope we can continue. You know, that's not as easy to say. Sometimes it takes me three or four takes, but I'm going to try it again without cutting the video. I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.